okay so uh, good morning my dear future chat accountants i hope everybody is doing great can you please confirm first that my voice is audible and the ppt is visible yes okay thank you so in the previous sessions we have discussed ratio analysis and financing decisions now we'll move towards investment decisions what is this investment decision or also called as capital budgeting it's about selection and evaluation of various investment alternatives especially for the business reliance mukesh ambani has decided to launch reliance jio which changed many of our life it's helped them a lot especially during the corona i think earlier we were talking about uh, 1 gb per month it was so costly and the telecom companies were exploiting the consumers and now it is 1 gb per day is not sufficient imagine uh, i mean i am sure i think many of you would be watching these sessions on using jio uh, internet it definitely had a very big impact but he decided to give initial so many dates so months to get the free data because he wanted to capture the market and uh, <coughs> how much infrastructure cost was involved thousands of crores right and what revenue they were got initially because they were given free also for so many months almost a year i would say so initially they spent so much of money in the infrastructure in the machines telecommunication equipment networking equipments they have invested a lot expecting of course profit to make it in future that is the investment decisions they made so while making those big long term decisions which involve substantial expenditure construction of roads starting a company starting a fresh branch and long term period see once you start you can't exit so easily see same example reliance uh they have started the reliance jio no they can't go back and say no no it's not profitable i'll close it in 6 months it's a long term project irreversibility once you start you can't come back and there are lot of elements involved complex decision even in your life i can say you will also come across the situation like should we uh, construct a house or purchase an apartment or should we live in rented house situation like this so basically we will have two kinds of questions maybe uh, forms existence replacement problems that is if you have a machine existing should i purchase a new machine or continue with the existing one or mutually exclusive decision in in the sense uh, i accept the project or reject the project situation like that we are going to follow two types of techniques traditional techniques and time adjusted i will discuss one by one okay uh before the techniques one thing you have to keep it in mind in capital budgeting problem in the investment problems we prefer more of cash flow rather than profits certain things profit also we consider but more than profit we give importance to the cash flow why because profit again can be different for income tax purpose can be different for a company act purpose lot of subjectivity difference of opinion involved whereas cash flow is same everywhere so in financial management we give more importance to the uh, uh cash flow rather than profits and this very common you will find big questions with lot of paragraph lot of information uh, rows some um, sentences problems involving capital budgeting so students usually find it very complex so i have designed one simple method 
when you see lot of information lot of data relating to this chapter divide the information into three parts initial cash flow interim cash flow terminal cash flow initial cash flow what happens at the beginning of a project when you want to purchase machine you have to pay amount purchase price that is initial cash flow during the life of the machine depreciation will come you can produce units you can sell profit will come those things are interim cash flow and once the machine useful life is over residual value will be there scrap value will be there that is terminal cash flow like this any big problem you try to divide this in three factors you will be able to solve the problem easily we have two types of techniques we'll come to it uh okay like initial cash flow if the problem is regarding replacement for example what cash flow will come if replacing new asset you are purchasing cost of the new asset and installation charges will be there sale of old assets sale of old asset uh, that is if you are replacing means existing asset should be sold sale proceeds from that and when you sell you will also have to pay tax or the profits so tax on sale that's how you get initial cash flow interim cash flow you know pnl account revenue minus expenses uh, you get uh, depre separate depreciation you get profit before tax subtract tax you get profit after tax and after getting profit after tax you add depreciation that's how you get cash flow you go till pat so revenue minus expenses minus depreciation minus tax you get pat but once you get pat i want cash flow means i am going to add depreciation because depreciation is non cash item now one thing if i ask you will you able to help me with this i am subtracting depreciation and i am adding depreciation why not i ignore it completely what is your opinion will it be wrong anyway i am subtracting depreciation to compute the profit and later i am adding depreciation can i ignore depreciation will it be fine what do you think will it be wrong can i ignore depreciation yes the difference will happen because of the tax tax will be different so if i want to compute the cash flow directly you can do it but you should adjust the tax impact on depreciation now uh, if i do revenue minus expenses uh, depreciation before that i'll call it as profit before depreciation and tax pbdt before tax before depreciation and i want after tax means i will multiply it by 1 minus t directly i have gone for after tax so i get the profit after tax cash flow also but the problem is uh, tax amount is not correct why because of depreciation when you have depreciation you will save tax your cash flow will increase indirectly so pbdt into 1 minus t plus depreciation into t this is called as tax saving on depreciation tax shield on depreciation so you can also follow this formula pbdt into 1 minus t plus depreciation into t you will get the cash flow every year and terminal cash flow salvage and any tax impact also should be considered okay now coming to the techniques that we are going to apply traditional technique we have that is payback period what is the payback period time period within which our investment is recovered that is our common phenomenon when i invest something when will i get the money back payback period formula investment divided by annual cash flow so the simple my investment is 1 lakh every year i get 20000 so 1 lakh by 20000 in 5 years i will be able to recover my money payback period then we have accounting rate of return or also called as average rate of return the formula is 
average profit numerator divided by investment like a return on investment i am making some investment i am getting some returns return on investment return numerator profit if many years profit is there we'll take average profit divided by investment average profit by investment and the investment sometimes can be initial investment or you can also do average investment initial investment plus terminal value divided by 2 so you can divide by average investment that concept also exists but normally we do it as initial investment that is average profit by initial investment into 100 is accounting rate of return okay then we have NPV, I mean time adjusted. So in traditional method, the time value of money factor is not considered. In time adjusted, we will consider the impact of time value of money, the present value concept we have to apply. Most popular among them is NPV, net present value. Formula is present value of inflows minus initial investment. You will have future cash flows. All of them, you bring it to present value using discounting factor or using annuity factor. When I multiply future cash flow with discounting factor or annuity factor, I get present value of inflows, subtract investment, I get NPV. If NPV is positive, we say the project should be accepted. And discounting rate is our required rate of return, which you have learnt in cost of capital, minimum required rate of return. Sometimes they tell you cutoff rate also. Then we have IRR, internal rate of return. It is the discounting rate at which present value of inflows is equal to initial investment or we say NPV is zero. And profitability index is present value of inflows uh, divided by initial investments. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me give in the form of a formula, simple formula, so that you can apply clearly. So we have three parameters, I will compare it. We have NPV, IRR, PI. NPV is net present value, IRR, internal rate of return, PI, profitability index. And when nothing is given the problem, we usually go with NPV. If they just tell you, should the project be accepted, I will go with NPV as the base, most popularly accepted. Okay, so NPV expressed in rupees, absolute rupees, whereas IRR is expressed in percentage and profitability index expressed in ratio or times. It is basically used for comparing two, three projects anyway. Now NPV, <coughs> Formula is present value of all cash inflows minus initial investment. This is NPV. What is IRR? It is the percentage, this is a discounting rate at which present value of inflows is equal to initial investment and PI is present value of inflows divided by initial investment. For every one rupee invested, how much I am getting back. So when the project is accepted, NPV, project is accepted, project accepted, when? In case of uh, NPV, it should be greater than zero, profitable. In case of IRR, it has to be more than cost of capital. In case of profitability index, PI should be 
more than one. So this is our acceptability criteria when the project is accepted. You can write down this quick summary for your reference. If you have any doubts, you can please ask. Okay, so I'll take a quick numerical uh, before I take up problems where I'll compute NPV also, I'll compute IR also, I'll compute profitability index also. Uh, I hope you're done. <coughs> okay. Yes, good. Let me take some very basic one. Suppose uh, initial investment. is let's say 50,000 and let's say annual cash flow is uh, 20,000 and say discounting rate, required rate of return, let's say it is 6%. <clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, make it as 8%, I think I told you 6%, make it as 8%. So what is the cash flow I told? 20,000, right? So if I write it in a columnar format, in a graphical format, year 1, I will get 20, 20 or 25 I told you, 20. 20, right? I told you, 20, I forgot. 20, okay. Year 1. 20,000, year 2, 20,000, year 3, 20,000. This is what I told you. And today, that is year 0, is investment. Investment told you 50,000. So, I will write minus 50,000. This is the cash flow. Now, when I want to calculate NPV, what should I do? This 20,000, I would like to bring it to present value. I would like to bring it to present value and for which I am going to use discounting rate. And I told you to make it as 8%, I mean 6%, please take it as 8%. Discounting rates, make it as 8%. Okay, make it as 8%. And what will be the present value is what I would like to calculate. I can write this in a simple columnar formats like year, cash flow and since every year cash flow is same, I can use uh, annuity factor, okay, discounting factor, discounted cash flow. Here, since every year I am using, I don't want to calculate separately, every year cash flow is same, I will write like this, year 1, 2, 3, cash flow is 20,000, discounting factor at 8%. 
So how do you calculate the identity factor? Uh, we can do 1 by 1.08, 8%, right? 1 by 1.08, 1 by 1 plus R. Then press equal to 3 times, equals, equals, equals. Then you can press GT. If you don't have GT, you can do equal to M plus, equal to M plus, equal to M plus. 3 times you can do. Then at the end, you can do MRC. Or in the exam, they'll give you an factor table also. Don't worry. This is what is going to be an T factor. 1 by 1.08 equals, equals, equals 3 times. Then press GT. So how much you get? Two point five seven seven one. If I take four decimal, two point five seven seven one. Two point five seven seven one. And if I multiply, that will give me the present value actually. Twenty thousand into two point five seven seven one. Uh, Okay. <clears throat> this is present value of inflows, 51,542. So when I present value of 20,000, 20,000, 20,000 is 51,542. So my inflow is 51,542. This is my inflow. This is my inflow and uh, this 50,000 is my outflow. So net or for this amount, I can subtract my initial investment minus investment 50,000. So we get NPV net present value 154. Can we take up to four decimals or three decimal will do? Even two decimal will do. If the question does not specify anything, you can take any number of decimals. I will recommend go for four for discounting factor. After that, you can take even two decimals. For discounting factor, I would recommend four. But in the examination, they, if they are given you, you have to use it, okay? In the exam, if they give you, given PV factor is given, two, fa two decimal, two decimal only you take. You don't take three or four. If they are not given, you can take anything. I recommend 4. So we say NPV is more than 0. We say project should be accepted. Okay. Now, if I ask you one question. If when the discounting rate is 8%, NPV we got 1542. Now you please tell me, if I make an interest rate as 9% or 10%, what will happen? Do you think will the project be accepted? We don't know, right? We have to calculate. So instead of calculating like that, should I calculate? I mean, if the interest rate is uh, ink changing, what will happen to my NPV? Instead of calculating the NPV, let's find out the rate itself, which means what I'm trying to tell you, year one, okay, I'll, I'll write in the next slide. Hope you have taken down this part. Okay. Okay, now, what we did now, year one, 20,000 you get, Year 2, 20,000 you get. Year 3, 20,000 you get. 
and year zero you are investing fifty thousand. And we have calculated, we have discounted this, right? And we have discounted at eight percent. We got fifty one thousand five forty two. Now what I want, I want this present value only to be fifty thousand. And what is this percentage? What is the discounting rate? Are you getting the point? What is the discounting rate? What is the rate of return that this project is giving? Such a way that present value of inflows is equal to outflows, or in other words, NPV is zero. So for that, we follow interpolation method. For interpolation method, we need two interest rates. Okay, we need two interest rates. In between that, we try to calculate. Now, one rate we already got it. Rate of interest. When we got it at eight percent, the NPV what we got is one five four two. But what I want, what is the discounting rate? Such a way that NPV should become zero. Inflow outflow both are equal. Now please tell me, should I assume a higher rate or should I assume a lower rate? What do you think? If the rate increase, what will happen to my NPV? Please keep it in mind. The rate and NPV are inversely related. Inversely related means if the rate increase, NPV will reduce. If the rate increases, NPV will reduce. Now I want NPV to be zero and one five four two. So I need a negative NPV. Are you understanding my point? Why I require a negative NPV? Because between negative and the positive, I will try to estimate zero. Are you getting the point? I am calculating the percentage such a way that NPV should become zero. So NPV should be reduced. If NPV to be reduced means we will take a higher rate. To put it simply, don't think too much in exam. If NPV is positive, I want negative here means uh, you take a higher rate. Let's say I'll take twelve percent. Assume higher rate so that I get NPV negative. So if I want to reduce my NPV, increase the interest rates. If I want to increase my NPV, then I should reduce the interest rates. So twelve percent, just assume higher rate. You can take ten percent also. So let us recalculate. At twelve percent, what will be the NPV? Year, cash flow, discounting factor. At twelve percent, then discounted cash flow, present value. Year one two three. Cash flow twenty thousand. Now annuity factor will be different. How do you calculate? One by one point one two equals equals equals. Then you press GT. See how much you get. Two point four zero one eight is it? Two point four zero one eight. Then multiply twenty thousand into two point four zero one eight. Eight thousand thirty six. This is present value inflows. Subtract minus investment fifty thousand. You get. NPV negative, which is what we wanted. NPV one nine six four. So we got negative NPV minus one nine six four. So we have NPV positive. We have NPV negative. I want zero. So corresponding number will be between eight and twelve. That is what we solve it by. Interpolation. How do we solve interpolation now? Now eight percent to twelve percent. So see what is the gap here? Eight to twelve percent. The gap is four percent, right? The gap is four. 
Similarly, what is the gap from 1542 to 1964? Can you tell me the difference? How much is the difference between 1542 to uh, minus 1964? Please don't do 1564 to minus 1964. It is minus of minus a plus becoming 0, then 0 becoming negative. So, it becomes minus of minus plus. So, 1542 plus 1964, it is 3506. 3506. Now, I don't want to come till 3506. I want to come only till 0. So, what is this gap? 1542. I want to come to till 0 only. So, what is the corresponding number? I will write it here. For 4%, it is 3506 movement. For what movement in percentage, I will get 1542. You can do cross multiplication. 1542 into 4 divided by 3506. One point seven five. One point seven five or one point one point seven six. One point seven six. So IRR equals this number is one point seven six. So it is eight percent plus increase one point seven six. So eight plus one point seven six it becomes 9.76 percentage. So, the discounting rate what we are uh, putting question mark. If my discounting rate is 9.76, if my discounting rate is 9.76, my present value will come to 50,000. So, basically it is like this. If you go to a shop, you ask the shop fellow, how much is this dress cost? He will tell you 1000 rupees. Then you ask how much is this shirt or cloth cost? He will tell you 1500 rupees. You keep on asking how much is this, how much is this, how much is this? What will the shopkeeper will ask you then? If you keep asking like how much is this, how much is this? He will ask what is your range? What do you want? Similarly, here, instead of going for, for this discounting rate, NPV is so much. For this discounting rate, NPV is so much. We can directly ask how much you give. That is what is IRR. So, IRR is 9.76%. And what is our expectation? Cost of capital or our required rate of return? 8%. Since IRR is more than cost of capital, we say project should be accepted. If my cost of capital is 9%, still I will accept. If my cost of capital is 10%, then it is exceeding. My, my, my cost is more, I will not accept the project. So, IRR is the actual return provided by the this project, this business. So, please write it down. Let me know if you have any doubt. Few points in difference, is the answer is acceptable? Yes, few points in difference, answer is acceptable. Uh, because of the decimals and rounding off we take it, that's fine. But in the exam, if they give you these decimals, if they give you this discounting rates, discounting factor, then even small acceptance also, they will not take it. But when they have not given, a rounding off is accepted. But if they give a new table, you have to be very accurate. Or actually we have formula also, you can use that also if you want, IRR is 
whatever is the cost of capital i'll say lower percentage is difference in percentage divided by difference in npv difference in percentage by difference in npv multiplied by npv at lower percent you can use this formula also uh, lower percentage is 8% uh, difference in percentage that is uh, 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 12 minus 8 divided by difference in npv that is 1542 minus of minus 1964 multiplied by NPV, which is 1542. You can use this formula also. You get 8 plus 4 into 1542 divided by 3506 minus of minus of plus. This also will give you 8 plus 1.76, 9.76. You can use the formula also if you don't want to show the calculation. Uh, like the interpolation I showed you. In the exam, both are accepted. Okay, so hope it is done. So NPV have we have calculated, IRR we have calculated. I'll quickly calculate for uh, PI also profitability index. Hope this is done. Okay. I just compute the PI profitability index. It is present value of inflows divided by investment. Uh, PV of inflows, we have calculated 51,542, investment 50,000. So basically this 1.03 means for 1 rupee invested, I get back 1.03. So this will be useful when I want to compare different project with different investments. If I invest 1 lakh, in some other project, I invest 5 lakh. I will not be able to compare with NPV, right? Because my investment amount is different. There I can go by profitability percentage. Means I can go for PI, profitability index, also called as desirability factor. So there, wherever the ratio is highest, I will go for it. Uh, this can also be used in the concept called as capital rationing. Uh, where I have many projects to select, project A, project B, project C, and what should be the combination of the project such a way that I get maximum profit. There, I can rank order. First, my investment will go where PI is highest. The remaining amount go for second rank in the PI. Then, remaining amount will go for remaining amount. So, PI can be used for capital rationing to rank order. So, my amount will go for maximum profitability first then the second rank 
and then the third rank and so on so we can prioritize which project to select so that every rupee invested will give us the highest profitability okay so hope it is done uh, this is regarding the various theory concepts as well as uh, cash flow calculation doc a quick run through uh, we will apply it in problems any questions you have okay then let's go to problems so you can come to this problem again exam question only at limited is considering three projects abc the cash flows associated with the projects are given below cash flow associated with the three projects c0 c1 c2 c3 c4 year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 abc three projects you are required to calculate payback period for each of the three projects if the cut off period is 2 years which project will be accepted uh, the projects with positive npvs if the opportunity cost of capital is 10% payback gives too much weightage cash flows occur after the cut off date true or false if the firm uses a single cut off period for all the projects it is likely to accept too many short lived project true or false pv factor the table they only have given okay good let's calculate payback period now payback period means within what period we get the our money back so first one part a payback period for project a for project b for project c okay now look at the investment see when they write within brackets it is investment minus 10000 investment when will the when the amount is gotten back first year you collect 2000 second year you collect 2000 so 2 plus 2 4000 you collected plus 6 10000 exactly 10000 you recovered in how many years you recovered over a period of 3 years therefore the project a payback period is 3 years no calculation just observation investment 10000 recovered uh, at the end of third year you can also calculate cf cumulative cash flow but in this problem it's easy just observation is sufficient next project b you invested 2000 when we got the amount back first year nothing you got second year you got which means you get the money in second year only you got it payback period that is for project b it is 2 years in fact you can see we are not using present value concept here we are taking cash flow as it is if we use the present value technique that's called as discounted payback period instead of cash flow column we will make use of discounted cash flow column anyway that's not required just told you for your reference then c 10000 2000 first year 2000 second year 6000 third year i think third year three year i have recovered the money so c I record the money in three years time. Three years.
Okay. Second, if the cutoff period is two years, then which project should be accepted? Now, two years means within two years, we should recover our money. Now, project A will take three years exceeding our cutoff period. I don't accept. Project C, three years exceeding our uh, cutoff period. I don't accept. So, if cutoff period is two years, if cutoff period means I have to recover within two years. If cutoff period is two years, only project B is accepted. Project B is accepted. Uh, if projects with positive NPV, if the opportunity cost of capital 10%, okay, we should calculate NPV. So let's do in a columnar format. And every year cash flow is not same. So I can't use annuity factor. I should use discounting factor. So we'll have columns. Year. Cash flow will write later because three projects are there. I'll write first a discounting factor. Then I'll do for project A. Then we'll do for project B. Then we'll do for project C. Two columns I will use. One is cash flow column. Other is discounted cash flow column. Cash flow column. Discounted cash flow column. Cash flow column. Discounted cash flow column. So here discounting factor will be common for all. Project A, Project B, then Project C. So we will have how many years are there? One, two, three, four. You can start with zero also if you want. One, two, three, four. Okay, discounting factor they have given. Let's write it. Uh, 0.909. You can start with year 0 also. That way the total of the column only will give you the NPV. 0 0.909, 0 0.826, 0 0.751, 0 0.624, 0 0.683, 0.683. Cash flow two two six zero So let's multiply we get the discounting factor point nine zero nine into two thousand one eight one eight point eight two six into two thousand Six five two point seven five one into six thousand four five zero six and this is zero of course. So total seven nine seven six. These are all present value of inflows. Subtract investment. That is initial investment ten thousand. So NPV minus two zero two four.
Okay, let's do project B. Cash flows uh, 0, 2000, 4000, 6000. 0, 2000, 4000, 6000. Save discounting factor. So 0 into this is 0. 2000 into 0.826, 1652. 4000 into 0.751. Three thousand four, then six thousand into point six eight three, four zero nine. Eight seven five four. Investment is uh, two thousand. Six seven five four, I think. Okay. Uh, similarly, can you please try for project C and tell me what is NPV? Show question. Uh, you don't have material with you? Okay, I'll show it anyways. Okay, uh, you get uh, 4806 NPV. Hope you are getting it. If not, please uh, try it down later. You should get 4806. So here NPV is negative. So we will reject this project. 6754 will accept this project. NPV is positive. And 4806, again, we will accept the project. So project B and C are profitable projects. Project A is loss making project okay <clears throat> so a is done b is done c is done Payback period gives too much weight to cash flows that occur after cutoff date. True or false? What do you think? Does payback period consider cash flows after cutoff date? The answer is no. Payback period is worried only about recovery of investment. When will I recover my investment? It is not at all talking about the profitability aspect. So it does not consider cash flows after recovery. So you can write down statement is false. Statement is false. Statement is false because 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 payback ignores payback ignores Payback ignores payback ignores cash flow 
after recovery payback ignores cash flows after recovery of investment after recovery of investment after recovery of investment okay so hope it is done then d is done e if the firm uses single cut off period for all the years it is likely to accept too many short lived projects the true or false uh, again i think this statement is true because if you use the same period the shorter period where recovery is fast everything will get accepted uh, and you don't worry about the profitability aspect so this statement is true so you can write down point e statement is true statement is true statement is true because 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 payback does not considers payback does not consider payback does not consider cash flows after recovery does not consider cash flows after recovery does not consider cash flow after recovery resulting in resulting in resulting in selection of resulting in selection of short lived projects resulting in selection of short lived projects selection of short lived projects okay so this problem is done i'll go further Okay, let's read further. <clears throat> CK Limited is planning to buy a new machine. Details of which are as follows. Keep it in mind, since the data is huge, we have to the we have to divide the information into three areas, which are the initial cash flows. which will come in interim cash flow and which comes in terminal cash flow iit initial uh, initial interim terminal think that way so big problem can be sliced into small problems cost of the machine at the commencement this is going to be initial economic life 8 years residual value this is going to be terminal zero still annual production capacity 1 lakh estimate selling price variable cost annual fixed cost advertisement expense maintenance expense cost of capital analyze the above method using net present value advice uh, just read the problem i'll just come in 2 minutes
Okay. Okay, uh, I hope the PPT is back. It's closed automatically. Hope the PPT is back. Okay, uh, analyze the above mentioned proposal using net present value method advice. Even if they are not given, we would have calculated NPV only. So, first of all, I told you uh, solve the problem in a systematic manner. So, we have initial cash flow what happens at the beginning interim cash flow i'll give more space in fact 8 years 8 lines you can give space and terminal cash flow initial cash flow cost of the new machine 250000 what goes out and uh, year 1 2 3 4 5 6 you can do row wise column wise uh, i'm calculating cash flows first then i'll come to npv and all and uh, i can do 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 but look at the information. Uh, year one, there is one special expenditure, some advertisement expenditure. Year five, some special advertisement expenditure. So year two, three, four, there is no 
uh, no no change and year 678 also there is no change only year 1 year 5 uh, we have some uh, additional expenses so year 1 will do separately year 5 will do separately year 2 3 4 will be same year uh, 678 will be same and that is why i have done it like this uh, year 1 uh, year 2 3 4 have combined and year 5 and year 678 have combined if you want, you can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We will take more time in exam. Wherever possible, we should try to save time. Year 2, 3, 4, same information. So, we can just do with one column itself. Write down till here. Okay. Okay. So now let's calculate. Uh, can you please explain again? Uh, now, when when we solve the problem going forward, we'll understand. Basically, what we are doing, we are calculating cash flows. That's all. What happens initially? What happens when the project is alive? When what happens when the project is completed? That's all. So, we will start with our regular P&L account format that is uh, we will start with uh, sales revenue for that we require number of units, number of units, annual production capacity of the machine 1 lakh units that is same multiplied by selling price that is what will give me revenue. So, let us do that 1 lakh units into 6 rupees, 1 lakh units into 6 rupees, 6 lakh same thing for all. 6 lakh, 6 lakh, 6 lakh. You can actually write 6 lakh also. Sales is what we require. Number of units, selling price is only for information. Okay, sales is done. We will subtract the variable cost. Uh, we have variable cost 3 per unit, 3 into 1 lakh units. 3 lakh, that is 1 lakh into 3, you get 3 lakh. Same thing for all. And also keep it in mind, uh, some people will may think, sir, this is uh, 6 lakh for year 1, 1 year, no. You are writing year 2, comma 4, year 2, 3, 4, 3 years are there. So, should I write uh, 6 lakh, uh, 6 lakh, uh, 6 lakh, 18 lakh? No, that is what I mean. This is 6 lakh sales for all the 3 years same cash flow. Total of the cash flows 
total of the present value i will compute separately getting my point this is same six lakh each each year year 2 also year 3 also year 4 also each year same sales hope you are getting the point okay then uh, fixed cost 1 lakh excluding depreciation depreciation will calculate separately One lakh fixed cost depreciation. Uh, depreciation formula, you know, straight line method. Cost minus scrap value divided by useful life. Cost of the asset two lakh fifty thousand. Residual value nil zero. Cost minus scrap value then divided by useful life uh, divided by eight eight years. Then advertisement expenditure special advertisement expenditure uh, comes in year one. And some maintenance expense comes in year five. Will not come in two to four, six to eight. So you can calculate a uh, profit before tax. That is, you ignore the first two lines. Sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost minus depreciation minus advertisement minus maintenance expense. Please do see if the number is correct. What have calculated? Uh, no information on tax, so zero tax. So we get back profit after tax. Then add back depreciation. Same depreciation is added back. That will give me cash flow after tax. Okay, so this is the working note. Terminal cash flow, uh, residual cash flow means uh, no residual value, so zero, no salvage value. You can actually present this problem in much shorter manner, but I'll do it at later point in time because in this problem, lot of information is not there. For example, tax not there. But in some other problem, tax will be there. In some problem, salvage value will be there. That's why to make you do any problem, this format you can follow. Simple, logical format. But this problem we can save time. I'll do it at the end. Let me complete this problem. Okay, hope it is done.
Okay. Now let's go for NPV calculation. So for NPV calculation columns, you know, year one, I mean year cash flow, discounting factor, discounted cash flow. Year we start from one to eight, or you can start from zero to eight also. Year one cash flow will be one lakh eighty. Year two two lakh. Year three two lakh. Year four two lakh. Why, sir? Because this year two to four is a cash flow each year. I hope you remember. I told you earlier itself. This number is cash flow for each year. Therefore, when I write cash flow. Uh, year one one lakh eighty. Year two two lakh. Year three two lakh. Year four two lakh. Year five one lakh seventy we calculated. Year six two lakh. Year seven two lakh. Year eight two lakh. Discounting factor they only have given. You can write it. And year eight salvage value zero. I know zero still have return. So that as a practice you write that. Otherwise you might miss the residual value in some problem. That is why. Discounting factor don't calculate. They only have given. Uh, take it and last we'll have two discounting factor. Remember, because last year cash flow will have same discounting factor. Last year salvage value will also have same discounting factor. Multiply one lakh eighty into point eight nine three equals one lakh sixty seven forty like that. Complete the table. Okay, so if you do present value, uh, you get nine lakh fifty eight eight seven thirty initial investment. We know two lakh fifty thousand. So NPV around seven lakh eight thousand. So please check the numbers. Since NPV is positive, we should say. Machinery is recommended to be purchased. <laughs> recommended to be purchased. <laughs> this one institute has shown a solution. So I showed the same step. Which you can apply in many other techniques also, but uh, I'll show you a better small format for this problem. First, you complete this, and let me know if you have any doubts.
Uh, is it completed? <laughs> Done? Any doubts? Any questions? Okay, fine. Now the same thing I can show you in a faster manner. What is that? Now in this problem, can you please tell me? Please observe and tell me. I have subtracted depreciation and I have added depreciation. Can I ignore this? When I asked the question earlier, can I do this? Many people told, rightly told, sir, you can't ignore depreciation because there will be tax impact. But in this problem, there is no tax also. Now what we can say, can I ignore depreciation? Absolutely. No tax. Depreciation has no impact. It, has, it is non-cash. So depreciation you can simply ignore it. And one more thing. Why are we doing it this year 1, year 2, year 3 separately? Because this one maintenance expense is there and advertisement expense is there. Right? These two. Advertisement expense and maintenance expense. If these two are not there, uh, we can ev even use annuity factor for every year. Every year other sales are same, variable cost is same, fixed cost is same. Yeah, even if for exam, for this problem, if there is no depreciation, if no tax, ignore depreciation. How you can present easily? I am showing it to you now. Take a look at this. Can I follow, follow this? Uh, can I follow this in exam? Absolutely. Here cash flow, discounting factor, discounted cash flow. Cash flow, selling price is 6 rupees. 3 rupees uh, uh, variable cost, uh, contribution 3 rupee into 1 lakh units, uh, contribution 3 lakh, uh, minus 1 lakh, uh, fixed cost, uh, 2 lakh profit, uh, no depreciation, uh, no tax, straight away cash flow, 2 lakh and you add all the 8 years discounting factor, annuity factor, you take it. Then some, cash flow, uh, some uh, special cash flows are there. What is special cash flow? Year 1, some advertisement expenditure. Okay, year 1, outflow 20,000 and 0.893. You take it, first year discounting factor. Uh, it is outflow, expense, so within brackets. Then year 5, one more special cash flow is there. Take it separately, 30,000 and uh, 0.567. That's all. And if it is allowed for tax purpose, if you had a tax, I could have done into 1 minus T also if tax was there. This also outflow within brackets. You get same NPV, exactly same NPV. Can we present this in exam? Yeah, absolutely. Logically correct. But it, it, these things will have some risk. Shortcuts will have some risk. But if you are thorough with the concepts, you can present this also in exam, no problem. So you can write down this format also for your reference. Write down. Okay, hope it is done.
okay uh, this is with respect to investment decisions or also called as capital budgeting uh, major areas we have discussed uh, if you have any doubts you can definitely ask we have one more area left that is investment decision with risk risk analysis in capital budgeting we have a separate chapter uh, before that let's take a quick break uh, let's take a break of 10 minutes uh, 11:30 now let's meet 11:40 42 around 10 minutes and then we'll take up the next chapter so take a break of 10 minutes then we'll meet